Hello everyone, it's your favorite cyber new type, the Dapper Bard. Yeah, I'm back. It took me some time. A couple of reasons. One, I didn't really want to watch this. And two, more importantly, I got really, really sick and behind on a bunch of videos. And so it took me forever and a half to actually get around to watching episode 13 of G-Witch. To be clear, I have not actually watched episode 14 yet, even though it is out, because I wanted this to come out as natural and real as possible, and I feel that had I seen episode 14, it may have influenced how I viewed this episode. Not that I'm going to have a particularly positive view on this, because Suleta achieves full Mary Sue in this episode, and she still has no agency, and the writing's still bad, but... Before we get into all of that, I need to warn everybody that I'm changing the format a little bit. I'm no longer doing the spoiler section anymore. I'm literally just going to tell you what happens in the episode. This show is not worth hiding the spoilers. If you haven't seen the episode yet, that's on you. All right, let's get started with the story. We begin at the Astakasi Academy as Suleta has to go through a gauntlet of battles because apparently all the time she had spent away from the school made a whole bunch of challenges add up, so she had to go and fight them all. We get a whole load of jobbers. Only the first character actually gets a name, and he's someone I don't recognize, so I'm assuming he was just created for this scene. If he was a background character, whoop de doo she fights a background character. He also names his mech. That's nice. The fight lasts five seconds, and almost all the subsequent fights don't last particularly long either, because why should we ever have tension or threats to our main character? After the opening sequence, we end up finding out that we are at status quo! Yay, the best place to be! Nothing has happened because of episode 12, and according to the Earth Dorm kids, the government or the Benerit group or whoever just covered everything up. It was an industrial accident. There was no terrorism. So things just move on like normal. After that, we find out that Miorine is at the space hospital with her dad, who is still in a coma. And we find out that the Benerit group is planning to take down the terrorists. And considering the fact that they prevented the production of Gundams. Oh, wait, no, they didn't. Well, if they can't even do their primary job, I'm sure they can totally get revenge for Delling Rembrandt and Vim Jaturk. At the school, we end up finding out that it's like an open house week kind of thing where different other students can check out the school so that they can do kind of a recruitment drive for the school that requires you to be a billionaire to even go in the first place. In the process, Sophie and the boring chick from the mercenaries show up and pretend to be students. And we get a whole kind of weird scene where Sophie is referring to Suleta as Big Sis and convinces her to go and give her a tour of the campus. And she even prevents Elon from hitting on Suleta, which was, yeah, we still have to deal with Elon, right? Elon 5 is still out there doing Elon stuff. We'll get to him. Anyhow, Nika is dealing with her own personal problems. Suleta tries to make her feel better by telling her the same stupid advice she has been telling every character in the entire show, because it's the only thing she knows how to do, is parrot her mother's advice. Martin also confronts Nika to follow up from that scene from episode 12, and she ends up hand-waving away the whole thing by saying it was just an SOS. Funny, I happen to remember somebody who said she would just hand-wave it away and we'd move on to life. Man, who was that person? Are you watching him right now? I think you are. I'm not going to gloat, but yeah, I can kind of predict where the writing goes in this series. The major Nika drama occurs, of course, with the mercenaries, who she knows are mercenaries, and they end up confronting her on her not knowing what the plan is, because she's been left in the dark, because Nika's not that important. We also have the two spies hanging out with the Earth Dorm a little bit, until the Earth Dorm is distracted, because Suleta finds out that, oh no, during the open house, she's going to have to do duels again. Shock! Guess what you have to do as the holder? You have to defend your title. Why is she always surprised that she has to defend her title? Gah, so that is an idiot. Anyhow, while that's happening, our two spies sneak off into the hangar and start looking at the Fract to find out if it's going to be a threat to their units and their operation. Nika, of course, follows them in and tells them to stop doing that, and their response is to try to murder Nika, which, a bit extreme, but... Fine, they're murderous mercenaries. We kind of established that in previous episodes, so I guess it's on brand. Suleta then comes in at the last second, rescues Nika from being killed, 
confronts the girls and tells them that she challenges them to a did it did it did it did it duel. And boring girl laughs about this because why should a mercenary go and follow those school rules? But Sophie is intrigued and decides to enter a fight with Suleta. They have a brief talk about the purpose of the Gundams, whether they're meant for destruction or meant for saving lives. Same kind of stupid thing we've kind of seen in the series that isn't really well thought out, but is part of the themes of the show, I guess. And that ends our episode. Except we have an after credit sequence where Miarine at the space hospital is visited by Lady Prospera. Lady Prospera basically says, hey, you don't hate my daughter, do you? And Miarene is like, no, not really. Which I believe I also called that Miarene would be a little bit upset, but it wouldn't have a major impact on the relationship betwixt the two characters. So I guess I should have called myself a clairvoyant cyber new type instead of the favorite cyber new type. But whatever, I can call myself that at a later point because I'm fairly certain I'm going to be predicting lots of plot points this season. Anyhow, Lady Prospera introduces her to Quiet Zero, the secret project they mumbled about in episode 12, and that ends everything. Ooh, mysterious project, mystery boxes. Ooh, mystery boxes. This show's writing is terrible. As for the characters, yeah, it's not great, and there's not that many I can talk about. Suleta is exactly the same. She has a little bit of a moral problem with killing a dude, but her mom says, that nah, was okay. And she goes, all right, mom, you're right. Because again, Suleta has no agency or mind of her own. She just does what people tell her, making her an incredibly boring character. But don't worry, it gets worse. As I made reference to earlier, Suleta goes full Mary Sue this episode. Not only is she just the bestest mech pilot ever, not only can she just make people feel better by talking to them or looking at them, but she also has everyone liking her and no real problems according to the show. In fact, the closest thing you could call a problem is that little minor conversation of her mom. But beyond that, Suleta is just basically chill and just go with the flow and nothing's ever gonna be a major problem for me because I'm a boring, bland, stock piece of wood. So yeah, while a lot of people were complaining in the first season about Suleta being a Mary Sue, this episode really hammers it in she is a freaking Mary Sue garbage tier pro tag. Hey, look at the good news. You can hang out with that dude from Sword Art Online and be the boring characters club. Yay. The next character of note we should talk about is Nika. Nika is actually kind of shaken up about the events of the previous story. Wow, I'm glad someone actually has an emotional reaction to that. They also seem to imply that she's trying to be a link between Earth and space, but there's a thing about visual media you should probably know about. It's called show, don't tell. By having characters talk about her being this link, it doesn't do anything for the story. It just tells you information. Versus if we actually saw her trying to be a link, trying to be a negotiator or some sort of peace bringer like Raylina from Wing or Cordelia from Iron-Blooded Orphans. Instead, we just get her kind of being there. I liked this character, but they don't know what to do with her or whatever they are doing with her. It's so poorly handled that I can't get behind it. Next character of note is Martin. Why is Martin important? Well, as it turns out, he's the leader of the Earth Dorm. Did you know that? Probably not. Did they make reference to it at one point or another in the series? Possibly as a passing line? Who knows? His status as a leader showing any kind of command or leadership abilities to the entire group is Vapor. This character is essentially no different than any other generic character in the dorm. This whole time, I just figured Choo Choo was the leader of the dorm. She's the most active and energetic of the entire group. She's the one who talks and has scenes where she does stuff. Let's talk about Elon. Elon is um happy because it's Elon 5. But the good news is at least characters are noticing that he's acting out of character. He's trying to get Suleta on a date. He's trying to be more personable of other characters. It's fine, I guess. I just wish we could go somewhere or do something with Elon 5 because this is just like, okay, yeah, he's around. And what are we doing with him? What's the scheme? What's the plan? What's anything? Finally, we have Sophie and the boring chick. I know I keep calling her that. I honestly don't remember her name and I don't have enough spoons to look it up. Anyhow, 
these two began trying to act a bit more naive and silly and like, oh, yay, we're your friends. We just want to hang out because they're on a spy mission. And then by the end of the episode, they're already murderous again. So this could have been an interesting arc where it makes you wonder what's going on with them. But instead, they immediately tell you they're spies. They'll kill if necessary. Cool. There are new fangless antagonists because I can't imagine them really being a threat to anybody because no one is a threat in this show. Aesthetically, if you've seen season one, part one, this looks exactly the same because we're at the exact same location and nothing has really changed. The fights are banal at best because it's just Suleta curb stomping a bunch of people. It's hard to tell what units they're even using because everything moves so quickly and the destruction happens so fast. Same problems we've been having where they never really tell us what any of these robots are, or why we should care, or who any of these pilots are, or why we should care. Granted, those are story issues and not visual issues. Visually, it's fine. I sat through it. The big thing of note is that we have a new opening and a new closing. The opening has a brand new song. Thank God, it actually sounds good. It's a generic kind of rock song, but it works for the show. The animation with it, you know, shows off the various characters, shows some robots, the basic stuff you'd expect from a Gundam opening. Overall, it's a marked improvement over the previous opening sequence. The closing, I'm mixed on. I don't hate it, but the singer clearly can't hit those super high notes and it just comes off like screeching. She's trying to be Mariah Carey or Celine Dion or someone like that, and she just doesn't have the range for it. But the song itself isn't terrible, except for when she tries to hit those high notes and just can't do it. The animation for the closing sequence is actually pretty decent. It has a nice moody feel to it. Some cool little art motifs in there as well. Overall, not bad. Just wish the singer was a little bit better. Wrapping up, I just want to say that this episode was kind of a drag. I, I got a little worked up in the review just because it's frustrating. You know, like I said in my episode 12 review, I'm not really mad. I'm more just disappointed. And I knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to have a banal opening with a few moments that are going to annoy me and I'll yell about it because the characters aren't written well and the story isn't written well. And I can only complain about the writing so much. And worst part is, no matter how much I complain, it's not going to change anything. I don't speak Japanese, and they've already written the whole season, so that. Also, in terms of predictions for the next episode, Sophie is going to get curb stomped because no one can be a threat to Suleta. More than that, Sophie's already been kind of defeated by Suleta before in episode 12, and what chance does she really stand when she has more limitations because of the school rules? So yeah, I can't wait for that super climactic battle between Sophie and Suleta. Two characters who have such a huge rivalry and have so much emotion betwixt the two of them. Boy, can't wait for that. The only thing I'm really happy about right now is the sheer amount of people who've been subscribing to my channel. Thank all of you. It's so great to know there's people who actually are listening to me and understand where my frustrations are coming from with this show. In addition to that, I mean, the sheer amount of views my Witch from Mercury videos have been getting over the last month is kind of mind-blowing. I don't know how or why my videos started blowing up, but I'm glad they did. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And until next time, I'll be back with episode 14 very soon. But until then, I'll see you at the tavern.